right, so it's come time to tackle this rear bumper. Now, you would have known if you'd watched the previous episode, this is a HZ wagon rear bumper bar. And they didn't come uh, standard in the utes, but I think they look better on the utes. So I wanna try and fit this one on. Now, <clears throat> if you recall the brackets that came with it, I did have, and I've actually got them upstairs, but uh, apparently they don't fit, All they, I've lined them up, and they don't fit on the original holes on the ute so in order to make it fit you have to drill a new hole behind one of the rubbers here but before i get to that i want to strip this um paint this comes with a purple paint that uh, was on there from obviously a custom color and someone's attempted to try and remove it to reveal the chrome underneath and yeah they sort of achieved a little bit of it over here and here's not so much so I'm going to use paint stripper that doesn't react with the, the chrome apparently. So but before I do that, I want to get rid of these rubber strips. And in order to do that, you've got to get rid of these little arrow heads that have pushed through these holes in the back of the uh, bumper. And there's also a little nut here, both of which are going to be difficult because that one's pretty rusted. And these have hardened over time. So to flex them back in and pop them out, it's going to be pretty hard. But anyway... It's got to be done, so whether I cut them or succeed in popping them out, it's another story. And then I can start to uh, wrap it up with the paint stripper and glad wrap, and then hopefully that gets it off. So put some glad wrap over that and you can see that it's peeled off beautifully. So I'm going to take it out the back now and give it a gurney and we'll see what's left over until it's all gone. You can see even the silicon is peeled off of the rubber that was on, on there as well, which is good. So yeah, I think it's going to come up all right. cut a bit out but essentially I got all the paint off that uh, that bar and it's come up really nice so I'm um, happy to go forward with that I haven't even polished that so I'm going to go through a whole polishing process as you look closely you know there is some stains and some I suppose brush marks from previously when they probably painted it um, and it's just got a faded appearance with a few stains and things on it so I've done a test run with some polishing already and I'll go through that process at the end but at the moment I just want to test fit this on the ute and I don't know of anyone that's done this before I know I've seen it done a million times but uh, yeah I couldn't get any information really on how to fit it so I've just been learning the hard way as per usual. What I've found is that obviously it's not a direct fit at all and sticks out a little bit on the sides. Um, but the main issue is, and I think this is probably common practice once you get involved with these, fitting these rear bars. Oh, can I also say, getting those rear bumperettes off is one of the hardest jobs of the, of the whole build. It's an absolute nightmare. I don't know what Holden was thinking when they did it, but yeah, the, essentially there's, well, there's two, two bolts here, two on the side, and in order to get access to them, you've got to remove the whole rear light assembly and get in there, which is an absolute prick to get to. There's like, you can see there's two there and two there. And you know, there's no room to get a socket or, well there is, but it's a very tedious process. So in the end, I found the easiest way is just get a little air ratchet, put a socket on it. It's 13 mil and that can slide down once the light assembly is out. And um, yeah, just give it a little <laughs> heave ho when she's out. Make sure you WD-40 them before you do that because if it's an old ute, and most of them are, 
down here you get a lot of soil a lot of water and most of the time they do rust in so chances of snapping them could be high and you do not want to snap one of those ones there's an absolute nightmare the bump stops also a part of the uh, structural integrity of it they don't just screw into this actual bumper out they go into a bracket behind it and it is it is only a um, phillips head screw but they just do they all rust i don't think i've seen one that hasn't you know it's um really hard to get off and then most of the time they do snap so you'll end up probably having to drill one out just drill them out if you can uh to save your chrome and then yeah generally if you just drill the head out you can pop the rest out yeah and then i just grabbed the uh the little bit behind it and um ended up using just a pair of multi-grips and ended up putting some wd-40 and getting out the thread without destroying it so it was all right the difference with the ute to, and to the wagon must be this lip here so you can see that lip is coming down in the ute and it's touching this here right on the top of this bar because obviously the bumper it's only come to here to allow for that lip and I'll go and yeah you know, I'll just show you on the actual WB yeah so that lip there is in the way so it's taking up you know a good i don't know inch and a half uh and stopping that from going in so yeah the only way around it you're certainly not going to cut that lip off so the only only way around it is to cut the actual top of the bar and make a recess it's a shame you don't want to start hacking into these old chrome bumpers but I've committed now, so I might as well see it through. It's not going to stop me from replacing the bumperettes if I change my mind. So you can see it there. It's just like one and two there. So I just need to mark it and figure out how much I want to go in. So you can sort of see there, just to get down to the actual brackets that it's going to be sitting on. I don't know. If I, if I recessed it, say, 15 mil. That's probably, you know, in that condition, you could probably sell that for four or five hundred dollars. So I am committing to it. But if you did sell it with a recess, just sell it to another person with a ute that wants a full rear. They, uh, they are reasonably popular, so you will always find a customer for that. Um, anyway, I'm going to keep pushing forward with this now, mark it up and start cutting. All right, so I've taped that up. I'm going to go, it's around about 11, in between 11 and 12 mil. It goes a little bit wider there. I might try and factor that in when I'm cutting it. Yeah, I might straighten that up actually. So anyway, that's uh, what I'm gonna go with. <clears throat> and if that doesn't work, uh, then I've stuffed the bar. But I think it will be fine. It's pretty straightforward. Just gonna allow a little bit more room. Um, I did think about tapering it actually, just to make it a little bit more finesse. So I may do it on an angle, just to make it a little bit more factory looking. Um, yeah, so I reckon we'll get into it. So a bit of an update. I, um, wanted to get these coach bolts. Uh, obviously these are chrome. I was going to get them from the bumperettes over there, but just, uh, in case anyone tries to reuse those, they're actually smaller on the bumperettes than they are on the um, front bumper so these are the larger ones and um, yeah underneath they've just got a, a bolt like that and every single one of them was rusted solid because these things obviously cop all the the weather and if they haven't been taken off since they rolled out of the factory chances are they'll be welded on with rust and you won't stand a chance in hell of getting them off because yeah the square head of that rounded bolt there sits in the square hole on the um, bumper bar. And so if it's really rusted, it, it will actually um, push out, obviously from the pressure of, uh, of the bolt, you can't get any purchase. You have to push it forward, but if it's really, really hard, I was getting a C clamp, putting a leather strap over here and clamping it on, but obviously it's really hard to get a purchase on the other side for that clamp to stay on. Anyway, with a ratchet, you're probably best off with an air ratchet. And um, 
yeah, what it what it does is if you not if you don't have enough pressure, it'll round off that square and you're stuffed. So I've spent I spent literally three hours trying to get rid of these bolts, and had an absolute gutful, and went to Bunnings because I can't get the right ones at the moment. I just want to get this thing t test fitted, and just got some um, stainless steel ones of these at 70 mil, and I'll just they're actually wider, but I'll just yeah test fit them with that. And um, I may even leave them on, who knows? But then, you know, you can get a set from Resto Country for 26 bucks, I think, the proper ones. So these ones are about 25, 30 mil long, I think, with the HZ ones. You've got more room underneath, so it wouldn't be as bad. But this bumper, since I took this off as well, um, it, yeah, I've, I've mentioned it before, but it really is in a bad state of repair. So I'm thinking I might not even try and save it. By the time I flap around, you know, trying to get it repaired and um, tied it up, I don't reckon I'm going to get away without re-chroming it, and that's going to be a thousand bucks. So you're better off just buying a new bumper bar and um, flogging that one off to someone who cares. So this leads me to my next mission, and this whole um, bumper bar exercise, I feel like I'm sort of wasting my time with it, to be honest. So yeah, I could have just put the bumperettes on and moved on with my life, but um. I don't know, I've just got to see it through now. But So this is the original wagon bracket. Now, I've been reading in forums that you, um, not many people use these, but there was one guy on oldholdens.com that had a bracket system that used these wagon brackets to go on the ute. And obviously these are the proper ones to use because their structural stability is a lot greater than the other method, which is to put it on the bump stop of the tailgate hinges on the ute. So, you know, instead of having three bolts straddled across the whole face uh, vertically and horizontally, you've got one bolt here and one bolt there for the entire bumper bar. So you'll end up getting this sort of rattly wobbly thing. And I don't even know if it'd be legal, to be honest. So like, Roadworthy might pick it up and, um, and say, sorry, mate, you can't do that. So <clears throat> I reckon you're smarter off using these sturdier brackets. Not only is it gonna be potentially a lot better for roadworthy, but you're not going to get this sort of rattly, wobbly effect that you might do if you put the, just the two bolts. In saying that, if I can't make this work, I might just do the two bolts. Now, unfortunately, they only sold these stainless steel bolts in 70 mil, um, but these sort of go through a fair bit. I think I'll have to chop them, and um, yeah, won't be a huge job to chop them. And I may even just keep them for the final, to be honest, instead of spending some more money. Um, anyway, so I'm just going to put them on first because that way I sort of know my distances and, and I can sort of play around with how it's going to sit on the, on the back of the ute. And then I can remove the actual tailgate bolts and pretty much go from there. I've made that recess there so they can fit that lip in, which is fitting fine. Um, that's dented in the middle, that's why it's going in. This is an old beat up HZ, but the thing that's stopping it now, which I assume people probably cut as well, is this hinge from the tailgate as well, because that's topping out. It's basically maxing out there on both sides, and that's stopping me from getting that kind of extra height. Um, and it looks shit ass without, without it. You can almost go back a little bit more so it really needs to sit like that. And if I get that hinge piece out, um, cut it out, I can then have the ability to raise it slightly. The other problem is the mounting nightmare um, continues. So I've had a look at these brackets underneath. I've had a look at the HZ brackets and they're miles off these things, absolutely miles off. So you'd have to completely cut this up and they're all in different angles and it's like you probably, use, I want to use this because it's got the three bolt holes, which, which um, go up to the rounded nuts on the outside, instead of putting a hole through the middle here and hiding that one solitary bolt in the rubber. Um, yeah, I was going to try and do it that way. So it was more stable, but uh, I understand why people just do the one because it, is a nightmare. So the other thing is, um, because you don't line up with the bolts inside, 
and these two points here inside where you got the where you got the nuts from inside this cavity here the only way to secure it once you've got those two nuts on there on the tailgate bracket is yeah is obviously from external bolt um, and so otherwise you will never be able to get the thing off you'll never be able to adjust those two bolts on on the actual tub without removing the bumper bar first so that's why the bumperettes were done the way they were with the access of the two nuts in there and also here you can get access on the side of the bumperette um, but with this full bar you can't get access to that top nut on the tailgate bracket from underneath you can only get access to the the bottom one um, so really the alternative is yeah you, you got to put one bolt through there as everyone said or fashion up a bracket that um, will use these two holes here so that you can release the bar from inside those two lights here and then you'll get access to that uh, tailgate hinge that means you'd have to fashion up a bracket here for those two ones i don't think you'd worry about the end so if you did two here you'd still do that potentially through there as well just to give it a little bit of extra strength and then that should be it but um yeah finding the distance for that one there is proving to be hard while it's on so um i think the best thing is to just measure put a hole where this flat tailgate hinge is because that's where the distance is good and then basically fashion up a bracket across here in the same kind of manner that is going to be exactly the same plane and then yeah go from there bloody complicated So it's just come to my conclusion that this hinge is bent. So these, this tailgate was seized up pretty badly. <clears throat> and I think when those hinges, the hinge pins have um, seized up, when you push it down, it's just bent that little section down. Because it shouldn't be like that. If you look at the other one, it's straight across. And that's where the difference of height's coming from. So I'm going to bend it back up and uh that'll give me some more clearance it'll give me some more clearance in here that's where it's hitting it's hitting just on that little lower section there because i've i've done the same drop on each side i was wondering why it was not clearing here so i'll bend that sucker up and we should be in business all right so operation full width bar has turned out to be a uh, six part mini series spread over three days and uh i've had an absolute gut full but so here we are i've got the tailgate method uh, with the, one of those threads in there that's all i could find as a f tapered head probably want to get a flat one for uh, the final just so you can bed it in but otherwise you cut a recess in that rubber but it's actually a lot more stable than i thought it's like you know it's moving the whole ute really it's got a little bit of wiggle tiny tiny bit there but you know give it a little bit of extra torque on that thread and she's fine um so is it worth spending another day fabricating that bracket for those three bolts i don't think so you know as i said before close enough is good enough and you're going to move on three days is uh is definitely too long and something like this and i've got to move on to other things time is a precious resource and every day you waste trying to hit perfection you're not going to uh you're never going to see the thing through so i much prefer three bolts because i think it's still it's structurally safer um but in these old rigs if you get hit up the ass geez there's enough metal there anyway it's not going to make too much of a difference i think with a couple more bolts um so i'm pretty happy with that it's not fully seated in the on the top but you know i can't get any higher it's like maxed out there absolutely maxed out and i could sit it back a bit further but it also 
hits, hits that hinge. I mean, you could probably go back a little bit with some padding. See that hinge there? You could put some padding on the tailgate hinges and just bring that out again. Um, so yeah, I think that is good enough for now. So what I was thinking as a phase two, um, to make it stable on the sides, I'll show you. All right, so the original bumperette there has got those two little round nuts on the end. And that's obviously to hold on that uh, bracket there on the inside. So I think it's a natural kind of progression to do follow suit and pay homage to that original bumperette by having two round nuts, one here and one there. And um, that way you could utilize this factory mount, which you then screw in behind inside the, inside the body um, with those internal bolts. And see that these two brackets will be close enough. You could fashion up a, um, yeah, you could fashion up a set of mounts to just extend that, to put them there and there. And that way you've got end stability and it's not going to interfere with, with mounting the thing um, once you put the brackets on. So I think that's a, a natural progression to, to do that as stage two. That wouldn't be too hard to fabricate either. You know, you just have to, I would say, mount this on the body first, have a look down, take a few measurements and try and weld a extension onto this area and this area. But for the sake of YouTube and getting this thing uh, out, I'm going to leave it at the two bolt theory. So I've tried and tested both. I think the whole three bolt um, tailgate, the, the HZ wagon three bolt system where you have to chop and change, uh, that would be fantastic and that would be the ultimate outcome. But a lot of flapping around and very hard to replicate for both uh, left and right and try and get your exact measurements when it's mounted on the body. It's extremely difficult for those fabricators. They might have different a system that allows you to figure it out. But uh, I was even thinking about 3D scanning the whole thing and you know that way getting into the computer and figuring out exactly what your mounting system could be the most accurate uh, inside the computer before you flap around with this you know manual system. So for now, 95% of the guys do it like this and uh, I'll also join that group. So that is how you mount a full width bumper. Um, obviously, the only thing I haven't factored in is if roadworthy guys look at that and say, well, it's not structurally sound, but I think based on what everyone else has done, I don't think they go into depth with that kind of look um, once the rubber mounts and things are on, but it, you know, maybe I'm wrong. So it might be that you have to put the bumperettes on for the roadworthy and then chuck this bond later on or just before road where you get those mounts fabricated and uh, chuck it on. So now I'm gonna polish the bar, get it up to uh, 100% and test fit it on the WB. So I got off the HZ, I went and actually did a quick test fit on the WB and I had to just trim out a little section there just for the uh, underneath the tail light there. There's a couple of weld points. So just here underneath, to give you some perspective. I actually trimmed these welds on the HZ out there, so that's why it fit. Um, and I was hoping it would be different on here, but it's exactly the same. So you've got a, you can see where it was rubbing. Um, so what you do is, yeah, see it can just drops down a few mil. So I've just opened up that section that you can see and um, yeah, allowed it to give it some room and that made it tuck up another five mil. Um, yeah, the, the mount points for these brackets these have just been sandblasted and epoxy I'm going to have to spray them still, but just for test fits, they're fine. Um, yeah, so it was pretty much bang on. It was a little bit, maybe two or three mil on one side. Notice on the WB here, these one, these hinge points, tailgate hinges have got this little rod here, which is different to the other one. So I'm not too sure why that's there. Obviously, later model probably updated the design slightly. Um, so anyway, now that that's pretty much prepped and ready to go. I've just taped it up so I didn't scratch it. I'd like to hang the tailgate as well just to see how that's all sitting. I have done a mock fit to see if the joins actually clear that and they just clear. I might have to push that over. You do get a, like a small amount of um, play with these brackets. 
you know, they're on a little metal base plate behind there. And if that plate fell off, I don't know how you'd actually get to it because it is a sealed cavity in there. Um, but you can see, for instance, there on that circle there, it's an oval. Yeah, so it just allows you to move it for those actual um, internal screws, but it's also the same for these bolts here. They've got a slight plate so you can move two or three mil each side. So that gives you the adjustment you need. So anyway, now, and by the way, you can't see that, um, that groove either. So it's all covered by, that's covered obviously by the hinges. That's covered by the taillight overlap. Um, so it's just a nice seamless piece of chrome. And I didn't need to do it on this side um, for some reason, but if I find that I need to adjust it, I can easily take it off and, and groove that out as well. So now I'm just going to use some uh, KBS AquaClean. I've done this, uh, or I've done a thing on this before. Basically, it's part of that uh, rust blast stage where you uh, you clean it with this. It's just an all-purpose cleaner degreaser. Um, yeah, it's it's quite good. Give that a bit of a go. If I had some rust blast, I'd use that as well, but unfortunately I've only got uh, this stuff, which is still a pretty good rust converter. And before I do that, I'll just give it a wire brush. Now I have seen this on YouTube, and there's a guy that does these bumper bars uh, full time, and that's all he did, he just did that. And once he'd finished that and cleaned it and put the um, converter on it, he didn't actually convert it. He just went straight to a, uh, a zinc, well, a sort of a gel spray. I'm using a zinc spray galvanized. That'll just keep it at bay underneath and tidy it up, making it nice and new. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just gonna rip straight into it. All right, so that gel is about three coats zinc gel and uh, that will be enough that'll protect it so what happens if you don't check that rust in in the back I mean this car it's going to be garaged driven once a month you know so it's not going to be like an everyday car back in the 80s where you were using it all the time on dirt roads all this kind of stuff but yeah obviously the dirt builds up in there and over time if you don't check it It'll eat straight through and you get bubbles coming through the front of your bumper and that's pretty much game over. You'd have to repair them and get it re-chromed. So now that's sorted, it's fitted, it's cut, it's ready to mount. There's one last thing that needs to be done and that's to fix the chrome shine. So, all right, so almost there. Um, the last stage, I've done a bit of research and um, basically you wanna give it a clean. I, I used gumption at the start Gumption, if you don't know, is just an old school kind of Aussie cleaner, multi-purpose cleaner. It's got a fine abrasive, like, yeah, almost like, you know, those um, soaps you wash your hands with, mechanics wash their hands with, get all the grime off. It's like that, but a finer powder. It's actually not bad. It it's pretty much gets, it gets everything off and it's got probably a little bit of, you know, solvent in there as well. So I just tried that because it's here and you're like, just use what's around you. From my research, you know, you want to use a super fine um, steel wool. Uh, so I've been using that and I did a bit of a test patch, but I just went in super cheap yesterday. And I thought, well, while I'm there, I'll just uh, do a bit of a comparison and see what a metal polish does. Now, I just picked this one off the shelf. There's no brand uh, recognition or anything like that. I just thought, oh, there it says metal polish, I'll grab it. All these really are just, yeah, abrasives in a, a sort of a paste form that you can polish on. So I actually bought this ages ago for when I did a project, um, when I was con polishing concrete, I made a, a tabletop bench and I polished it with this thing. It's actually, you can put water in it and diamond, it's got diamond abrasive pads and you can just, you know, obviously take the concrete down. So I bought these little pads because I want to do this small air, areas of the ute when I'm polishing it. I thought it would come in handy when I'm doing this. So I just attached it to this and it's actually a beauty. So I'm going to be using this. This is a finishing pad, but I'm going to put a wool one on and I'll use that with the actual gumption or the metal polishing. Yeah, we'll just see how it comes out. I reckon it uh, will bring it back to some shine. I just don't know how much. So anyway, we'll get into it and see how it turns out. Right, 
right, so it's all done. I am absolutely uh, wrapped how it came out. I don't know if you can get a good idea on camera. It's, uh... But it, yeah, it's shining up nicely. Not 100%, but uh, yeah, they said if you want to get 100%, you re chrome it. But like someone was talking about the other day, it's like you got to balance out what you want and the condition you want it in. And you know, if it's just going to be a, a Sunday cruise, you can go to Cars and Coffee, you go for a, for a drive in, then that condition is fine. It's no need to get concourse uh, unless it's going on a trailer everywhere. So, yeah, so that middle polish. And the little lamb's wool is all I did. I put it up to six on the speed controller. Did a one pass, went till it blackened, and then did another pass. And that was the pass that made it really shine. And I did it a couple of times. And yeah, it uh, pretty much came up almost, yeah, as, as I said, 80%. There's a few blemishes and stuff there. Considering the thing was covered in two pack paint with paint stripper. And then all the way back to that, I couldn't be happier. So yeah, a good salvage. So now I'm gonna just chuck it on the WB and that'll be it. And done. Super happy. I've still got to polish that tailgate. That's where you can see the orange peel. I'm super happy with the results. Yeah. That tailgate needs adjustment slightly wide on the right, but as I mentioned, that would have to do with that hinge being out of alignment there. So move that over and the whole thing will shift over. But yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a lot of work, a lot of work, but so worth it. I reckon the full width bars, rear bumpers look so much nicer than the bumperettes. They really fill it in nicely. Those white hinges obviously need to be painted. But uh, lines up pretty well. So yeah, someone said you can cut and tuck the, uh, the bumpers to get them right in. But um, I'm sort of thinking, you know, what's the point in doing that when you've got to do the front as well. So I'm just going for factory look, but just slightly, a slightly neater kind of factory look, uh, which is pretty much what that is. Even though they didn't come out factory, you know, this, I still think this would have been a great option. That is it. Restored a full rear bumper and installed it. And in the process, pretty much started the assembly of the ute. So this is a final test fit. Um, you can see I put the rubber strips there, it's sitting there as well. But with the tailgate straight out of factory, um, someone mentioned that they weren't a very good fit, they don't line up. I didn't do any test fitting on that. And as you can see, you know, it was pretty much bang on. So yeah, don't worry about to what people say. This is only the thinner gauge one as well, and it's still heavy and, you know, it doesn't, tin can or anything. So I'm really happy with those tailgates. They're, uh, yeah, they're good to go. Um, and also you can see that tailgate was sprayed with a different color can than the quarter panel. So that was the first batch and that was the second batch. And uh, you can't tell at all. So that gives me confidence that the guards and the doors will be fine. So it's starting to come together. I just really want to hook in and get it all assembled now, but yep, we've got to just be patient, paint those hinges, 
polish the tailgate, get the internals in from this old battler here over here, clean them all up, get it in. It's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle as well. And then that's it. So all in all, I'm stoked with the result. Okay, so quickly before I go, I'm, uh, I'm gonna draw the winner for the spotlights that I, uh, from last episode, that I put on the HJ47. So as I mentioned, you had to post a comment on that last video and uh, I'll do a random generator and that will pick the, uh, pick the comment and whoever's comments picked is the winner. So I'll just do a, um, a screen capture now and um, run the software that's gonna pick the, pick the winner. So here we go. Okay, so here we are at commentpicker.com. I found that this is uh, an easy way to do it. Just paste in the YouTube uh, URL and you want to filter du duplicate users, um, exclude filter, no, we don't want to do that. And then two plus five, seven, get the comments. You need comments 30. So really you got one in 30 chance of winning these lights, which is pretty good. So once you've done that, you go to start raffle and pick random winner so let's go there you go ryan hughes there you go ryan hughes you've won the uh Barnsley. the lights look actually decent i have an fj40 that could use some lights so if you're giving them away i'll put my hand up there you go ryan hughes you've got the lights and uh congratulations at least they're going to a, um, a 40 series, which is pretty cool. All right, so that's it, major effort this time, but I'm glad another step forward. I'm gonna keep going now, get onto the seats next. Please subscribe, follow the Instagram channel if you need uh, any updates in between the episodes. I'm always posting stuff there. And if you're new to the channel, uh, yeah, go all the way back to episode one, follow the journey all the way through. I think we're up to about 74 episodes now over a span of five years, been an absolute marathon and it continue to be a marathon. So. Thanks again, enjoy your holidays, and I'll see you very soon.